Hey everybody, welcome back. Now, if you've been following us for a long time, you've probably seen our blue Carbon Cub FX3. We love that plane. Not too long ago, we sold it. And out of all the planes I own, I have to say that's the number one that I've missed the most. Well, I've decided to do something about it, but do something about it on steroids. And here it is. Welcome to our brand new 2023 Cub Crafters X Cub. On floats, of course, direct from the factory with Whipline 2100, full glass cockpit, incredible interior, and a 215 horsepower Titan engine. To me, this is the ultimate ploy toy, and I can't wait to give you a full walk around, show you all the specs on this plane, and we're gonna go through all the accessories and things that we've installed on it. So let's go ahead and get started. Hey everybody, welcome back to the walk around of our Cub Crafters X-Cub. In some cases, it's the NX-Cub, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but obviously this one's on floats. If you've been following us and looking at some of the other videos inside your membership and things, you probably saw a lot about our FX3, and that was uh, Charlie Kilo. That one had 35-inch bush wheels on it, obviously a tailwheel airplane. This one's amphibs, and we'll get through and talk about the amphibs in a little bit, but I want to talk first about this plane, this is brand new to us, came out of the factory as a, as a Anfib. It has about uh, 110 hours on it now. 20 of those hours were done by the factory and then getting it to us, so they've done the break-in and things. One of the differences why coming out of the factory as an Anfib is different is because everything is internal. They built this as a Anfib from day one. So where things are welded, all the, the tubes and, and wiring and electrical, which we'll get into all that when we get through the, the floats and things, but it came out of the factory as that. Now, I also mentioned this can be an NX Cub. So what's NX? Nose wheel. So this can be changed over. We take off this section and it can get turned into a, a tri-wheel airplane here with the nose gear on it. And the X Cubs can also be turned back into a tail wheel. So you can do multi configurations for, you can go float plane, you can go amphib, tail wheel, or nose wheel. Pretty versatile um, airplane. Now we do lose a little bit of speed. So I'm gonna talk about the engine and the prop here in a second, but you know, typically this plane in the NX version can you know, be about 150 miles an hour. We lose about 10 to 12 knots with our floats on here or our uh, 2100s here. So um, that's a little bit on the speed side, but let me talk about it. So this is the Lycoming. CC393i, which is 215 horsepower. It is dual injected, so it is fuel injected. 40 amp alternator on this. And uh, we get all the bells and whistles. It's got the quick drain in it, all that kind of stuff. Then of course we have the Hartzell. This is the uh, Trailblazer three blade prop, obviously. And this is the 80 inch. Now on the other plane, we had the two blade Trailblazer. I don't tell a whole lot of difference in them. You know, most of this video isn't going to be scientific. Um, this is going to be about my experience about these airplanes and what we love about them. The, the last plane with the uh, two-blade prop seemed to be a little bit cruise speed faster. This one, boy, this plane gets up and goes. You know, this prop, for some reason, this plane just feels like it just leaps off versus our two-blade prop. I could be wrong. That's just us. And we got floats here. The other thing I think is a little bit of difference in our tailwheel versus this plane. Our tailwheel, we had to get you know, 200 feet or so, we get the tail wheel up and then we would take off. This plane just, because it's already in its flying formation on its four wheels here, it just takes right off. So it could be a little bit of difference there between the fact that it's on floats and we got the three blade prop. Obviously why you'd want it, ground clearance. And in our case, water clearance, because the water will eat the heck out of these props, believe it or not. So our composite prop here, and uh, so this is the, the three blade. Again, we talked about 215 horse on this engine. Our last carbon cub, our FX3, 
was 180 horse. Big difference on uh, the power as well. Love this engine, love this package, love this setup, the fuel injected. Obviously it's a constant speed prop, so we can adjust that and things as well. This is also a little bit of a different setup in how the exhaust and things are. You know, in our FX3, we used to have to get up in there and clean the carbon out of, out of the drain and things like that. We don't have to do that on this plane. That's been eliminated and how they've changed this stuff over. So I should say generally, there's been a lot of changes to this X Cub versus the FX, the EX, and those series before it. So let's talk a little bit about the speeds and things. We already talked about, you know, cruise 150 miles per hour with the nose gear. This one we get slowed down a little bit. The VNE on this is 167 knots. I can tell you that the, the stall speed, the uh, VSO on this with full flaps, no power is 46 knots. You know, normal stall speed is somewhere in there as well. Um, the VFE, 81 knots. So we can drop those flats right about 81 knots. VX on this is 59 knots and VY, our best rate of climb is uh, 74. I'm usually on approach in this plane. I'm trying to be over the numbers right about 55. You know, this plane lands differently in, in that uh, we're doing about a four degrees nose up and we're controlling by power. So we're just basically descending by power versus our FX3 tailwheel. Obviously, we landed that plane a little bit differently. And this is probably one of the nicest landing airplanes I've ever flown out of all my airplanes. Absolutely love how this plane just lands. It just finesses right onto the runway and you can't even feel it. That's a little bit about the speeds and things. Again, about 55 knots right over the numbers. Let's go ahead and do a walk around. I'm going to talk about some of the features. I'm also going to talk about all the accessories that we have in this plane, that we've put on this plane, that we've we've built for this plane. We have a whole separate video in your library that you can go check out where we go through in detail the accessories, everything we've bought for it. We'll go through that. Let's go ahead head over to the wings. I'm going to start to talk more about the changes in the, from the FX to this plane when it comes to the wing star. Let's go over and do that. So let's talk a little bit about the wings, the flaps, the differences in the FX3 with the X-Cub. We're going to talk a little bit about this mount you see above me here and uh, just some of the weights and lengths and things like that. I just want to show you first, you see that mount right there? That is a mount that we built Specifically, we machined it here for our cameras. We've got a whole different video in your membership. You can go check it out on how we actually manufactured that. This is version two, but uh, check that out because it's pretty cool. Also gonna talk a little bit about this line here because I've had a lot of people that keep asking me, why is there a rope hanging off our plane? Well, for those of you out there that don't fly amphibs or float planes or anything, you know, we're pulling up to a dock and this rope here gives somebody the ability to grab here when they're on the dock and grab the plane and hold the plane. We actually made these in a way that we've got some loops and things on here. And when we talk about the floats and the lines and accessories, we'll get into these lines a little bit more, but that's what this line's for. Now, some people say, well, doesn't that flap and hit against the wing as we're flying? No, actually it doesn't. It just kind of flies and hangs out here uh, like this, as you can see, as we're, we're flying along. This is 23 feet, 10 inches long uh, as it sits here right now. Now, height normally, in the NX version, and the NX version is we take the floats off, we've got the tri-gear here. Um, that's usually about eight and a half feet. This plane on floats, we're up to about 12 and a half feet. So the wingspan on this is a little bit more than 34 feet. So I typically say it's a 35 foot wingspan. One of the differences in this plane is the cabin is wider. There's much more room in the cabin. When we jump in there, you'll see it's, but it's 30 inches wide. I hear a lot of people say to me a lot, why is it called a carbon cub? You know, the ribs are aluminum, it's fabric on this. Well, you could see it like this carbon fiber there, the spinner's carbon fiber, the, the Collings carbon fiber. There's a lot of stuff in this plane that are carbon fiber that makes it very light. And the carbon fiber is way more expensive than if that was uh, aluminum and things. You'll see carbon fiber all over. So why is it called carbon cub? Is because there is actually a lot of carbon in here. So that takes us to the weights and things on this airplane. They've really done a great job in the X cub line to give us some more increased useful load. Now, normally this plane's useful load would be right under 1100. So like 1084 is what's published. In this plane, because of the floats, we, we lose a little bit of that, but that's still a lot. And in the cargo area, which you're going to see a little bit more of here in a bit, it's 230 pounds that we can actually put in there as well. It's the other stuff. Now, in the floats and stuff, we're going to talk about that a little bit more. We can put 50 pounds on each side. So the useful load on this plane is incredible. Uh, normally, the total is 2,300 all up, but uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more. So let's get up because I want to talk a little bit about 
the flaps and the ailerons because they have changed in this plane. So let's jump up there and take a peek at the wing in more detail. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the changes in this wings and some of the stuff that they've done to it. Obviously, they went to a G-series flap. So these are more like a Fowler flaps. We got gap seals here. So, you know, these will slide up in there. Um, we can come down to 35 degrees on these. And then, we, of course, we got the G-series uh, ailerons here as well. Now, we're going to show you a little bit more about the fact that these are all push rods in the X-Cub. So there's no cables and stuff going through it. You can see in there that we've got an actual push rod that's, that's moving now. So these G-Series make a huge difference. When I feel the FX3 and we're flying, it's a little harder. Now, these, it's about 30% softer and easier to fly with these new series flaps and ailerons. These are awesome. So obviously these are aluminum on the flaps and ailerons and fabric on the wings. So we got aluminum struts that are going on in, in here. Then you got fabric on the wings. It's the poly fiber. So we got poly brush going on here, uh, poly spray on top of that. And then they go with a urethane paint over that. Now you can't see it on the camera, but the paint is beautiful. Iridescent. They do just an incredible job on it. You know, these are the wings. These are a little different style. Of course, you can see the VG kit across the whole wing. So it gets us that little extra uh, useful load and things like that. Now, this plane has 50 gallons of fuel. We have two tanks, one here, one on the other side. Now you can see we've got the fabric here, and then this section is the hard section that actually covers the tanks that are underneath here. All right, so back up on the other side of the wing, let's talk a little bit about what we got going on. So of course we got the full skylight, which is great, but in the Florida sun, sometimes it can be tough, but we actually have these shades that we're gonna talk about a little bit more. And if you go check out our accessories, we talk about the company that makes these shades and it goes all the way down the whole the whole backside and then we're about to replace these with the jet shades so if you go to jet-shades.com they make a see-through shade for here so these are going to come out because you, you can't see through these when you're flying my face is literally looking right through here so these are going to come out we're going to put the jet shades in here and then of course we got the four vents now these vents we can turn them and direct the wind down in there now Obviously, when it's raining, these aren't that great. They do leak. Uh, that's one thing to keep in mind. And if you're going to keep it outside, which we don't, but if you're in a rainy area, you're keeping outside, you got to do something like a cover, like a Bruce's custom covers we have for this. Uh, we can get on there. Now I want to talk about, here's the, the VG kit that we talked about. Now the leading edges are actually the aluminum, so they're not fabric. And then, of course, we just talked about the tanks that are here. Now, fueling this plane is a pain. It's harder because you have to be careful. You don't want anything hitting here. I typically don't let the line crews fuel this plane. I have them hand me the hose. I have them hold it off the plane and then I fuel it. I'm not a tall guy, so it's a lot harder for me to actually see up inside here when I'm fueling it and stuff. But it is one of the things that's been tough on this plane. It's easy for some reason on the FX3. I guess it's the way that it's, you know, formatted versus the floats, the amphibs here. But this is uh, the whole wing section, the two tanks we talked about. Let's go on to the next section and take a look at the struts. All right, so let's take a couple of minutes. I want to talk about the struts, the configuration. Uh, we're going to talk about the mechanics in it, underside of the wings. Obviously, these are these struts and stuff are made for the Anfib, but you can see where this can be modified and, and taken out. So it's only about a four hour project to pull off the, the floats or the Anfibs, put the Tundra tires on here or the big 35s, 31s and nose gear or go to tailwheel. But you can see here that this section comes off and then you can attach the wheels there. Now, if you go into nose gear, the wheels get angled out this way. If you go into tailwheel, they get angled out this way. One thing you notice on this plane versus our FX3, what do you not see? No cables, no cables at all in this system. Very clean, helps with the speed, keeps it nice and clean. It's push rods that are inside these struts. That's what's going on here. And there's actually a window here to, for a checkpoint uh, for those for the inspections and things. So that's uh, one of the biggest things here are all push rods. This is a very clean plane compared to the older versions. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about something while we're here. And that's this material that are on all of these bolts and things. You see, it's kind of a little bit of a goldish. That is corrosion block. It's a little sticky just to the touch. Now, obviously we need it on this plane because this plane's in the water all the time. So if you get 
water up in here and stuff like that and corrodes away at this. But this stuff is like something you paint on there. It's like a paste that you kind of put on all the boats that are down below uh, this section here. So the only thing this plane doesn't have is the laser system. They have a laser system in here that shoots down, tells you if you're landing on hard or water. It has notifications that go along with the gear selectors and controls and stuff like that. This plane doesn't have it. Down here in Florida with lily pads and all the stuff we have in the water, it's not that great. But the way that the audible system is in this plane is excellent. We're going to show you that, but I'm just telling that now because usually it's out in this area and uh, we don't have that in this plane. So before we move on, I just want to show you this flaps. I put them all the way down so you can get a good feel for it. You can see how they've been extended out and extended out here. So they're kind of dropping out a lot more. So there's a big difference in these flaps versus the FX3. And you can see the huge gap in here and the, and the underside of the, the gap seals. Totally new design on these G-Series flaps and ailerons. So just wanted to show that to you. All right, great. So let's talk a little bit about the storage on this. Obviously, this has the optional baggage door. We can put 250 pounds back in this area. The other cool thing here is this pouch. Can you guess what this pouch is for? Uh, a little bit of pew pew. Head over to E3 Firearms Association. But uh, we, uh, this is where we kind of can store some firearms here and uh, a lot of weight back here. Now, there's also another section here that you can open that you can store either headsets or anything like that. One thing that we did put in here is the battery tender. The battery tender system is up inside here. So we can open this up, we can plug in the battery tender here. We can also jump it if we have to. Lithium ion battery on this airplane is incredible. It's only about this big and uh, it just blows away the uh, FX3 batteries and things like that. We did put a little bit of carpet and things in here. And then also you'll see our Molly system here with all of our first aid kits and survival gear and all that kind of stuff is in here too. This baggage area is awesome. It's a little harder to get to on the float plane when it's uh, on the ground. It's a little tougher to get up there to reach in and stuff, but it's one of the best storage systems that uh, I like in the Cubs. So let's uh, go ahead and move to the tail. Let's talk about the tail section a little bit. Obviously still fabric covered throughout. There are no elevator trim tabs on this plane because of the whole uh, elevator is trimmed. So there's a servo inside here and you can see the electric trim. We can move this up and down on the stick, also controlled by the autopilot. Now I do want to talk a little bit about the cables. This is the rudder cable obviously going up to the pedals. We just did our first annual and there was a little bit of surface rust on the cable within a year. We had these all changed out to stainless steel so now we have stainless steel on here. Um, obviously throughout we still have the corrosion protection that's basically on everything here because you get a lot of spray that comes up from the water landings and things. We have our rudder controls here. So this comes from the pedals. And then this is actually what controls. So the rudder's being controlled from the pedals up here. And then these sections go down and control the rudders on the whip line floats. This uh, stabilizer is typically not here. It only comes with the Amphib kit. So when we go to transfer this kit over to a tail wheel, this comes off, these come off, and then this is where the wheel actually connects to. So this is the whole rudder section here. Now I do want to talk a little bit about the lights. This plane has all of the, uh, the LED, the watt LED system. And you'll see that out on the wings as well, the tail here. And then we're also going to talk about the landing lights and things that are on this plane. So that's a little bit about the tail section. So let's move on to the next part. Now let's talk about our Whipline 2100A floats. A being Amphib, obviously we have gear as well. And we'll talk about the control systems and the, and the audio and things when we get into the cockpit. But we just came off the tail. And the way this works, you've got your rudder cables that go down to control our rudder on the tail. And from there, this line comes back to control our water rudders. Now we have the water rudders down right now, just to kind of show you, but there's also a control that we can bring the rudders up. So let's spend a little bit of time talking about the control surfaces and things for the water rudder. We do not land on land with the rudders down and we don't land or take off in the water with the rudders down. The rudders are usually up when we're landing and taking off. And the only time we put the rudders down is just for control, for taxiing around and things like that. But even when we get in the high speed taxi and things, these rudders go up. One of the things that's interesting in the design on the, F, on the X Cub and these whip line floats, which I like the concept, but I'm gonna make some tweaks to it is there's a couple tabs here. Usually these tabs are down, so when the rudders are up, they hit these two spots that you see that are worn out right here. And then what happens is, is when you're hitting the rudders and the pedals in the cabin, they get to a point where this hits here 
and stops and gives you a little resistance. Well, why is so that when you're pressing the rudders, you get to that resistance and then you're pressing the brakes because this plane obviously gets steered by differential braking. So these hitting here and then stopping it gives it a little resistance so that the brakes kick in. I'm testing not doing that so that you can actually go full rudder on this and still use the brakes. So I'm going back and forth on that. One thing I don't like is how this is marring into, there is an extra plate here because of that, but we're probably gonna put a little bit of a quarter inch uh, mylar piece on there so that it can hit and give us that, that resistance that we need. That's how this works. It's, it's a really cool design. I like the concept. But uh, that's how the whole control system here works. Also, again, you can see all the corrosion protection that you see on here as well that we talked about. Let's head up to the front and talk about the rest of the floats. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the gear on these Whipline 2100. Obviously, we got four wheels on here. The, they're very soft landing gear. They're like a trailing link landing gear on the main gear. And then of course we got these, they got a little bit of a spring to it, the nose gear. These are just swivel. So again, we steer by differential braking. And then these come up and slide into the floats here. Some people put a wire tie that sticks up here and things. So when it goes up, they can look out the window and see the wire tie and know it's up in there and things. This plane actually has a really cool system and we have mirrors up there. We can literally look in the mirrors on each side and look across to see that our gear is up or down. We have a few different kinds of verification we can do. We can look out, see them, we can look in the mirrors, and also we've got our four lights on the, on the panel too. Now we tow this plane around with this tug. We just put this tug, remote tug up underneath the wheel. All it takes is one side, one wheel, and we're able to tug this around, no problem. But you do have points here if you wanna put uh, a tow bar and things on it. Let's talk a little bit about this guide, this wire that goes across here. It does a couple of things. One, it gives it a little bit of stability. Um, two is I can use this to pull it or move the plane back and forth. Because one thing you don't want to do in this plane is stop with the wheels sideways because it's hard to get it going again. So whenever we stop, we always try to make sure we go forward, get the wheels straight. But if we don't, then we can use this to kind of move it back and forth. But more importantly is when this is in the water, and we need to get from one side of the float to the other, we can just walk across this by holding on to the prop and just walk across this wire to get to the other side. So if we got to get over here and do pre-flights and things like that when it's in the water or get to our other storage areas where the lines are and things, you know, we can walk across this and, and do that. So let's go ahead and look inside these floats and see what else we've done to modify some of the accessories on it. So let's talk about the rest of the float system here. So um, what we've done is these plugs are here to be able to pump out the water from each section. You have these different sections in here and they're all separated and they're sealed off for obvious reasons. If we had poked a hole in here, water would get here, but it wouldn't transfer into the rest of the floats for obvious reasons. So each section here has its own little plug. Now what we've done is we've put this stretchy piece on here and we've kind of modified this because a lot of people they'll pull these floats out with like a screwdriver or keys they pop it out and then they drop it it's in the water they keep a bunch of these on with them so if they lose them they can grab another one to put them back in here well what we did is we kind of did a stretchy all the way down through all of them so if one's out like this you can pump the water out of there and then when you're done drop it back in there and you're never going to lose any of these plugs the other thing that we have which we really like is you know, we have a manual pump that we'll talk about in there, but we also have the turbo float pump. So basically we pull out this, put the float pump in there, and it basically runs and pumps out any water that's uh, inside that particular section. We have our lines on here, and we'll talk a little about these a little bit more. We've got a couple of lines. This one is more like getting jumping out of the plane, grab this, to jump on the dock, and hold on to this line. These lines will give us a little bit longer if we need to do some uh, tag lines, or if we need some spring lines on a dock, we got a couple spring lines that we can use here. And then they're also great when we pull up to the beach, we'll also use this and have another line that can go up to the beach, tie to a tree, or to the anchors that we have on the other side. By the way, we did a whole nother video inside the membership on all the accessories that we have inside the plane. You can go check that video out as well. All right, so let's talk about this section because this one is where we've got a ton of storage so you know, take a look inside here this is great we can do 50 pounds in storage in each side and this is where we keep our lines you know we keep our chocks things like that this is where we can tie up to a beach we've got chocks that are designed to be light uh, inside here we got the manual pump in case the drill doesn't go but go check out 
our whole video on all the accessories. Now, what else we've done is we've built a floor out of starboard. So this is a starboard floor so that all the lines aren't down inside the water. If you're a boater, like we are, and you know how that is to get your lines and all that, they're always down in the water. And you know, this false floor is halfway up and that keeps all of this stuff out of the water, which is really great. We have this section here. And then I had talked a minute ago about the indicators for as your gear is up or down. One is we can look out these mirrors right here and look across to see the gear over there on both sides. Obviously, we've got our panel with our lights on it. We can look out and look down to see that the gear is in or up. And then we also have this mechanical, which is hardwired, so to speak, to the gear. So when the gear is up or down, we got green for land, water for up. So we have almost four indicators to be able to check to make sure our gear is in the proper configuration. Obviously, that's a big thing in these. And I'll talk about some other stuff in the cockpit when we get in there about why it's important. Again, we also have our oar that's here and that's secured inside this pontoon. Again, we'll talk about all the other accessories. By the way, if you're not an E3 member, make sure you become an E3 Aviation member because we did a whole bunch of videos, deep dive into a lot of aspects of not only this plane, a lot of the other aircraft and things that we have that, that you would love for sure. And make sure you like and subscribe. If you want us to do more of these videos, you have to hit that button down below so that YouTube at least shows us to all you guys. So that's a lot about the whip line floats. We talked about the main landing gear a minute ago and everything is internally wired. This is why it's nice to get it from the factory as a float plane. And then we talked about the lines. Now, some cool stuff here is we have these slip knots on the lines so that we can slip these down, undo them from the cleats, and then just tighten them up and they just stay on here as they are. Let's go ahead and jump inside the cockpit and talk more about the controls and things like that for the gear, but also take a peek at our panel. Let's check that out. Let's take a couple minutes and take a walk through the cockpit on our X-Cub here. Um, we have everything except for the second GPS in here. So obviously we've got our controls here, constant speed prop, throttle, mixture. Of course, we get our breakers, our master switch. We've got our ignition switch here. So after we do our startup, we'll go on the alternator on, ignition switch on, fuel pump for takeoff and landing. Got our 3GX here from Garmin. And of course, in here, we've got our XM weather, XM radio, all the fun features and stuff in here. And then our Garmin G5 backup. Then over to the other side, we've got our normal lighting switches. We've got pulse uh, lights or strobe lights, and we'll show you those here as well. Then we have our breakers and our uh, avionics master and our nav lights and things. Below that, we have our GFC 500 autopilot, of course, with our level button. And um, I mean, it's got all the functions that you'd get in most of the, uh, the bigger planes that this is in. So great setup that, that we have here. I love this panel. Of course, we got our stick push to talk on here. Here's our electronic uh, trim that we had talked about and then autopilot disconnect. Now, also it disconnects the trim as well. So if you're flying and you just want to disconnect the autopilot, you actually turn the autopilot off here and not also turn off here. This is great because if you have a trim runaway and or autopilot runaway, when you hit this switch, it kills both of them, which is a great feature. And if you want to put your trim back on, all you do is hit that button again, your trim comes back on. So when you're flying, you want to get off autopilot, you just hit the autopilot here or hit this and trim and autopilot go off. So love that feature. Of course, we have a mount for the phones. We got our controller here for the rudders to put the water rudders up and down. And then I want to talk to you a little bit about our control system for the gear in this. Now, this is a really great system. They did a great job in this because it's audible and it's also indicating. So I talked about the four ways you can see that your gear is up or down. We already talked about those. This is one of them. Now, a few things that happen here, of course, if your gear is up, you'll have four blue lights for gear being up for water landing. If you have four green, gear is down for land. Now it also has audio, but it's a male and female. So if the gear is up and it knows you're about to land by manifold pressure, or if you have a laser system and things in it, you'll hear a female voice that comes on that says gear up for water landing. If your gear is down in green and it knows you're landing, it says a man comes on, it says gear down for land. So it's a great 
um, indicator and it psychologically it makes a big difference to you when you're landing whether it's up or down and then it also gives you warnings here so check gear configuration warnings when you're about to land and it senses it as an issue or anything like that it, and you have to press this to turn that off so it's consciously making you come over here press that and look at what your gear uh, indicators are at so really great system male female how this all works is good love that whole system there now we also have um, gear emergency um, pump for gear so we have a handle inside here and we can get that out put it in there and we can pump the gear up and down manually if we need to and then of course we have our fire extinguisher and we'll talk about some of the other stuff here and then in the back seat now back seat they have their own not only do they have their own controls but they also have their own panel So I hope you enjoyed the walk around of our brand new 2023 X-Cub from Cub Crafters. We love this plane. This is some fun flying. This, along with our extra, our other airplanes, that is just a blast for us to be able to share this with you. Now, jump into the E3 membership, your E3 Aviation membership, because we do some really deep dive on everything on this airplane, our other aircraft. We got some really cool mini documentaries of taking us down to the Keys, Florida Keys, Okeechobee, all over the place and a lot of fun stuff inside the E3 Aviation membership. Check that out and I ask you, please like, subscribe and make a comment down below, especially let us know which of our aircraft you wanna see more of or what other stuff you'd like for us to share with you. We share some stuff out there in the public with YouTube and different things, but a ton of stuff is inside the E3 membership. So we hope to see you on the other side and uh, see you in the skies. Take care, everybody.